Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. This is Ostronauts, and in this episode we are going to do the things we need to at the station to prepare for our first flight. I had initially intended for this episode to be the one where we start flying the ship and you learn a little bit about the navigation, but it turns out there's about 20 minutes of things that I think you really need to do before you head out. So we're going to take care of that right now, and then we will eventually depart and go and salvage some ships. And when we left off, we had kind of gone over what the different ship systems were, uh, and we had talked about uninstalling some of this equipment, uh, basically these seats. And I want to do that for the storage space that it will free up so that we can carry some uh, scrap back when we're done salvaging ships. But I did find a tip that uh, I didn't know about. Somebody pointed it out on a forum and I think it's really helpful. You'll notice right now that you kind of see a line of sight feature from where I'm standing. My guy's right here. He can see stuff this way, this way, but he can't see behind these walls. I appreciate that. They call it fog of war, but it's a little... I don't know. I think particularly for making a video, it's a little distracting. Uh, and I, I don't find it necessary for playing the particular game. I, I can see somebody if they're up here, for instance. Uh, so this doesn't really prevent me from seeing things. It just gives kind of a visual change in it. So if I press F1, it turns that off. And that might make it a little easier to see what's going on. You can see the station a little better. Mets versus this. So, you know, it just I kind of like that myself a little more. Our ship has not been repaired at all. It is flyable. We could uh, we could take off with it. I think if we hit X, we'll get the feature that shows us how damaged things are. The nav console is 100% repaired. We may have done that. I can't recall if I did it on the video or not, but it's in really good shape. Some of the other systems are, are not in such great shape. This battery is worn pretty badly. Again, we could still fly. That wouldn't keep us from doing that. But usually I take the first roughly hour of game time to clean up the ship. Now, before I do that, I want to go and get a few supplies. Now, I have about $7,600, and as we talked about, I want to have at least $5,000 to buy a salvage license in case I need to get one. Now, to salvage a ship, you do need a salvage license. You can do it without one, uh, but you can get busted. You can get a ticket, and the fine is pretty steep. So you don't want that to happen if, if you don't have to. But early in the game, when you're visiting derelicts, sometimes you find a license. And so we're going to kind of gamble that that's going to happen, save us a little bit of money right now. And for now, what I'm going to go do is go buy some tools that are going to help us with playing the game as we move forward. So I'm going to go to that supplies desk that we talked about in the last episode. That's right here. I'm going to basically right click it and I'm going to hit one, which is trade. And he'll walk up there. And I can speed up. We're right now at one time speed. I'm going to go up to eight times speed. You see he flew. Now it pauses when you get to something like this. So I'm, I'm paused, even though I'm still at eight times speed. I'm going to slow that down to four. I'm at the eight times speed, but it, uh, the four times speed now, when I exit this menu, uh, I'll, I'll be in that and I'll run back to the ship and we'll get started. So the supplies desk, you can buy things like, you, there's some food usually available, there's cigarettes. These are helpful for if you need to win somebody over, you can give them cigarettes and they tend to like that. It's part of the lore of the game. If you read through it, it'll, it'll talk about that a little bit. We can buy different shirts if we want, things like that. What I'm interested in right now are a few of the tools. Don't really need any of this. Can't afford the uh, EVA suit yet. This is this is what we eventually will want for working on our ship, particularly outside of the hull. And we'll get one of those eventually, just not yet. So for today, I'm going to get a few of these tools. And specifically, I want to get the angle grinder and I want to get the power drill. Those two are really helpful early game. There's uh, this tool right here, the, the laser torch. This is, this is the tool that all the salvagers want. It's very expensive, but it does a lot of the jobs of many of the other tools. Specifically, it does the grinders work, the soldering irons work, and the hacksaws work. There might be one, uh, I think that's it. The screwdriver and the power drill kind of do the same thing. So we're, we're getting the upgrade for the screwdriver basically with the power drill. So we, we're buying one of each of those. We're also gonna buy a couple of work lights. And eventually we want one of the, I'm sorry, one of these. 
the super handy equipment truck. This carries a lot of stuff in a small footprint, um, and it's very useful once we want to start building out our ship for grabbing walls out of uh, other ships, we can grab the walls, put them on here, and, and carry those around a little more efficiently. Otherwise, you can only really carry one at a time, one or two at a time. That can be a very slow process. Looking through the rest of this, often there are crates that we can buy, and a crate is a two by two footprint, but it holds nine items. So that's a that's a good trade off. Unfortunately, there aren't any of those right now, but there is. Just saw it here. A backpack. There's only one. Now we have our tote bag, but this backpack has 16 spaces instead of just nine. So we're definitely going to buy that. Uh, looking through here, I don't think there was anything else that I really had to have, but I do want to get a few batteries. So we're going to buy some just disposable batteries. These work for the work lights that we bought. I'm only going to buy one of those for now. Oh, and you know what? We're, I missed a step. We're going to do something else real quick. I'm going to exit from here. We're gonna run back to our ship. There's a fancy thing we wanna do that will make this all a little easier. So here he's back in the ship and I'm gonna pause. We can set up zones on our ship by hitting the N key. And as in Nancy, I'm gonna hit that and we're gonna set up a zone. The zone we're gonna set up is basically gonna include all of this space here. And what I wanna do, it's gonna include a little bit of extra actually, but I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna drag surround an area and it will effectively highlight that area for me and I'm gonna say add zone what this allows me to do so that zone doesn't currently have a color we're gonna make it yellow uh, or green I guess uh, this allows me to set up things that, that I can do with this zone specifically I'm gonna make this a barter zone so what will happen when I go to one of those desks like supplies if I buy things it'll just deliver them here for me if I want to sell stuff it will look and see what's in here and make that available for me to sell and it'll automatically port it for me. I don't have to carry it all around. Forbid is for when you have crew. Um, also, you can limit it to specific kinds of items. I haven't messed with this at all. Uh, try to do that at some point in the future, but for now, barter is the important one for me. You do not have to, in fact, you don't click add zone again. What you do is you click the outer X. The inner X will delete this zone. We don't wanna do that. Oh, also you can rename the zone by clicking on it. I'm gonna call this, uh, we're going to call it main cargo. That makes sense, right? Eventually, maybe I'll have a secondary cargo or something like that. We'll see. But for now, that's what it's going to be. You don't click this one. That deletes it. Instead, we're going to click this. Oh, and I, it's who it applies to. This is going to apply to everybody for now, although I won't have crew for quite a while. Okay, closing that. We're going to go back to the supply desk. There we go. And I'm going to rebuy all that stuff. So I'm going to fast forward here as I select it. Okay, a couple of other things I'm going to buy then that I didn't talk about yet. I'm going to buy the Halverson battery charger and the Gott battery charger. I have one of each of those tools. The stir welder that we have is Halverson. And then the other two tools I'm buying right now, the power drill and the angle grinder, are both got as well as the soldering iron so i'm going to want to be able to charge batteries for those on the go and i'm also going to buy an extra battery of each of those so interestingly enough the uh the batteries aren't actually all that expensive in general the tools are the expensive part we can get the uh the extras pretty cheap i think that's everything that i wanted oh the backpack i think i missed that i did okay so that's it down here, send items to barter zone. Again, we set up the barter zone on the uh, when we set up the zone, and I'm going to say accept. And it moved everything. Now, it gave me a happy tone. If there's a problem, it will give you a message down here that generally tells you what the problem was. One time, I didn't have space in, in my barter zone, so it didn't know what to do, and it told me it couldn't do it. All right, let's run back, and we'll take a look. As you can see, pausing time. It set all that stuff here. Real quick, I'm going to install the battery chargers. So I'm going to right click on it. We talked about this in the last episode, but I'm going to hit three. Now, this is an item that does have direction and I will need to rotate it. The feet show you where you basically stand to access it. And then the plug is where it has to have power from. So I have conduit running through all the walls of my ship. So I just need to sit that on a wall and I have to have a, an area that's accessible for the feet. This will work. Going to do that. He picks it up. He's going to go install that for us. 
There should be another one of those right here, and I'm going to do the same thing. Install, and it's going to go right here, and he's going to go and grab it. Okay, pausing again. Now we have the angle grinder, we have a battery. I, I should pick up these batteries. So I'm going to click one and hit two. Uh, these batteries I'm going to leave. There's another battery right here. Okay, and then I'm going to put those in their appropriate spots. So this is the Halverson charger. And I'm going to open its inventory. And as you'll see, it's the charger doesn't have anything in it. So I'm going to find the Halverson battery drop it in the charger. Real quick, if I try to put the other one in there, it won't won't take it. It lines it out. So you don't have to worry about getting them in the wrong charger. Um, if I click on something else while something is open, generally it'll open its inventory as well. So I hit one here, and as you can see, I still have the Halverson open, but the GOT is now open as well. And we're going to grab that, drop it there, and we're all set. Okay, so batteries are charging, although they probably already were, but don't we all leave our batteries out there like that? Then the other thing I want to do is start using the backpack. So I'm going to hit backpack. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to open inventory. We're going to pick it up off the ground. So I'm literally, so this is what's in my, my tote bag right now. I'm going to drag the tote bag down to here for now, and I'm going to open the backpack. And as you can see, the backpack has, not only does it have 16 slots, but it has additional pouches. The tote bag only had one pouch. This has four. The sound you hear is the proximity alarm. It means that there's a ship approaching, and that's not unusual when you're docked. That will happen periodically. You can turn it off by going to the nav. Usually it'll stop on its own. What I'm going to do right now is transfer the stuff out of the tote into the backpack. In fact, I'm not going to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a little different. We're not going to move this. Since I can't get any crates, we're going to use the tote as a, effectively as a crate. This is where I'm going to store like my clothes that I'm going to change into and, uh, when I need to use the pressure suit. So for now, I'm going to move everything else over to here. Uh, several of the tools are still in the toolbox because we haven't taken them out yet. So that's what we have. I'm going to close the inventory and reopen it. Since I'm pulling this around the room with me, it will continue to open up when I reopen inventory. But as soon as I put it down, I'm going to put it, uh, we're going to put it right here, I guess. So once I put it down, it will disappear on me. And so it's now, I put it up here. And when I open, you'll notice it does not open with me anymore. It just gives me the stuff, the, the, the hip pockets are on the jumpsuit. And then the small pouches are on the backpack. Usually I use the small pouches for things that I don't have huge concern over accidentally losing because when you take clothes off, the pouches will go away. Uh, now the backpack, you usually have the backpack with you. An EVA suit cannot include a backpack. That's when you take the backpack off. Okay, so what do we need to do? There's a few other things we want to do. We have the tools that we want now for the most part. We have an EVA, uh, we have a pressure suit and a helmet, so we'll be able to go outside the ship. But what I want to do next is remove these seats. I can right click on the seats and select uninstall. And if I do that, it basically will make it so I can move the seat around. It'll still be four spaces, but it'll be surrounded by a box to indicate that it's loose. And I can drag it around and I can carry it and things like that. For the purposes of what we're going to do, I, I, I could try to sell the seats. My experience has been they don't sell. They don't buy the seats, at least not up here in uh, scrap. So we, we could, in fact, maybe we'll go ahead and do one. We'll just do an uninstall of one seat. So I hit two and he's going to go work on that. We're going to speed up to 16 times and there's his work bar going down. And now I slow back down to two. So now this is loose. If I open up inventory, I think he might try to drag it around if I, he might be able to carry it. Otherwise I'll have to drag it around. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, he would have to drag this around is, is what it is. Before we do that, let's go ahead and disassemble the other ones. Oops, I need to put it back down on the ground somewhere. Put it here. All right, I'm gonna disassemble these or dismantle. So I'm gonna hit, so first I wanna make sure I have the passenger seat. If I accidentally click through to the floor, I will dismantle the floor and that will cause 
a hull breach and the air will leave the ship and I will effectively die. Now you have well, you have a little bit of time before that happens. I'd be able to get out, but I might not be able to get it fixed um, without having to go and buy a whole lot of stuff. So I'm gonna hit three to dismantle the passenger seat. My first three or four times trying to do this, I kept somehow selecting a floor when I would do it. And that was, it was frustrating because I couldn't figure out why it would select the floor. I think I was just misclicking or just not paying close enough attention. We'll speed up time and I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse as this happens, but I will make sure to dismantle these three seats. As you can see, that was really, really fast, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. Now, there's all this stuff that got dropped on the floor when I dismantled those. Some of it is trash. Some of it is mechanical parts. Some of it is aluminum. There might be cloth. Here's electronic parts. That's interesting. So basically what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go to the ground. I find it's easiest to pick the stuff up from this view because I can just drag it and drop it. You can also stack it on itself, and it will, uh, it will stack if you do that and then you can pull it over once you have them all stacked up trash will only stack to three so that's a factor to know but basically we're just going to pick it all up and then i'm going to move to the next spot where there's a little more and here's some cloth more trash so if i try to stack the trash on trash it will just swap them so what's happening there uh more cloth and take it. Oh, cloth will only go in tens. Mechanical parts, that's not those. Is that up here? Yep, okay. And there's just a little bit more up here, more aluminum. I think this, whoops, I think this one's aluminum. There it is. Okay, I think that's all of it. So now we're gonna come over here and pick this up, which will have us drag it. By default, it generally will do with an item whatever makes the most sense. In this case, my only option for moving it is dragging it. So it went ahead and set it up so that'll happen. And we're just gonna drag it up here to the We Buy Scrap desk. And I'll speed up time to let him go a little faster. And there we go. Okay, now this time I'm gonna go to sell. Well, I guess we did do this once before. And you'll notice the passenger seat is not wanted. I cannot sell the scrapped passenger seat and that's too bad i can sell the trash and the cloth the other things i'm not going to sell the mechanical parts in that because we can actually use those in the future we'll use them to repair stuff i haven't seen where you need cloth for that so i typically go ahead and sell the cloth as well but i will keep the rest of the uh the electronic parts the aluminum there's scrap steel there's scrap carbon fiber i think is one of them i will keep all of those things Okay, I think that was all of them that, nope, this last one too, all of that. So again, we're, it's only $5. It's not like it's, you know, we're not going to get rich doing this, but I like to make sure that the stuff is gone and out of the way. Now, theoretically, I could just drop it on the floor somewhere and it'll just stay. Um, I, I don't know that I, I don't, I don't like that myself. I think we ought to have to deal with it. One other thing to note is when I disassembled one of those seats, some of the stuff ended up outside the ship and that's just the way it is. Sometimes you'll like disassemble conduit or wall. Wall isn't a good example, but conduit and it'll end up on the outside. You can't get it back without going outside the ship and you can't go outside the ship when you're at the station. You have to be loose. Uh, you can punch a hole in your hull. I guess you could go outside then, but that's, uh, that's a bit of a job. So. Generally, I just leave these things until I'm ready to do outside stuff, and then I'll go and pick it up. Um, I think we're going to drop this. Now, part of the reason I got rid of the seats was to allow for space to store stuff. So carrying this around it doesn't benefit me at all. So I am going to dismantle it, and that's going to produce some of those goods again. You'll notice his dismantle speed was eight times. I think that's primarily because of the grinder. Okay, so he got some more scrap aluminum. That's good. He got more electronic parts. Mechanical parts. I think that'll stack up to 20. I think that's the most we can do up there though. More cloth, more trash. Okay, now we've, we've kind of dealt with that. Now I want to hold on to those things and I don't have a real 
need to physically carry them with me. So I'm going to put them in a pile down here. Each one will have to be in its own floor space, but that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go sell these two and I'll be right back. I just thought of something. I don't have to do that. I can come down here. Well, no, I do have to go up there to sell it, but let me demonstrate this real quick. I'm going to drop that other stuff as well. I'm going to drop the trash right here and the cloth right there. And then we're going to run up to the scrap desk and trade. And he runs up there. This time I'm going to sell and I'm going to tell it to open my main cargo area. And you'll notice this is all the stuff that's sitting on the floor in that cargo area. And I can sell that trash right out of there. So we'll hit that. We'll hit that. I want to keep the rest. Again, a dollar that wasn't, uh, we're not selling it for the money. We're selling it to get rid of it. So we have these, eventually I'll put a crate here and I'll store all that in a crate, or we could put a rack or something like that. We could even use the bulkhead for that matter. But eventually we'll, we'll have something to put that in. It won't just lay on the floor. Um, I do want to pick up the work lights and put them in the clothing bag. And I'm going to go ahead and put the batteries over there near the other battery stuff. So we'll drop these on the floor, right? Just do it right there. We will open this bag and we're going to drop the work lights in there. And the reason I'm doing that is I will put the work lights on the pressure suit when we first use the pressure suit. That way I'll always have the work lights with me so we don't go wandering off in the dark. Okay. We've actually spent a little more time than I realized doing this. Um, one of the things I wanted to show real quick before we depart is how you can repair your ship. Your guy will automatically try to repair everything on his ship. And to make that happen, all you really have to do is hit the behavior auto. And he's going to go around and he's going to start cleaning up the ship. And if I put it on top speed, you'll notice the clock is just ticking away. The ship will improve. You'll notice the floor looks cleaner and things that are busted up will get repaired. Of course, we can also force him to do something like the battery by right clicking on the battery and selecting restore. Now he won't do it while I've got him doing something else, but if I pause it, I think I can get him to, I have to tell him to cancel action first and then restore. And he'll run over there and fix the battery now. And what you'll see is as the battery is getting repaired, it looks a little nicer each iteration. And it's now fixed. It's 100%. If we float over it, it's got a good charge. And it's 100%. So there you have it. All right. Now, so it's important to know you hit auto and that will basically do it. I like to speed it up to 16 times. I usually run it to uh, 1500 hours just repairing before I go and do anything else, just so he, it kind of it's started, if nothing else. And he does tend to hit things that are close to where you have him when you start. So if you start it over here, he'll fix the nav console if it's down. At this point, though, we are ready to depart. So I'm going to end this episode. And in the next one, we will navigate away from the K-Leg station and find a ship to salvage. Thanks for your time. And until next time, fair travels.